This conference will now be recorded. In regards to, you know, equal opportunities. And obviously the last learning outcome that we did, uh, you know, which was looking at going into a bit of detail with regards to the origins of, uh, you know, word prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. And they were a part and parcel of, you know, when we talk about discrimination. So discrimination can be meted out in three different ways. And they generally are seen in the form of either oppression. That means you're basically looking at forcing an individual to do something which is against their will, um, or they're not happy to do that. In the other bits, we were looked at prejudice. Prejudice was primarily looking into we, we being biased about or being judgmental about, uh, you know, individuals that we deal with. And this was primarily because of our, uh, you know, values and beliefs. And when we talk about stereotyping, we basically look at, uh, you know, behavior. And in behavior, what we look at is we basically, depending on what experiences we've had in the past, on the basis of behavior, we are able to look at, uh, you know, drawing conclusions or putting people into a category. And that would be termed as, uh, you know, stereotyping. That means, you know, you're from such and such culture, or this culture depicts this and this, uh, or this kind of a attribute or, you know, bits uh, in terms of how we would look at um, making or forming a judgment. And in those cases, they would be, you know, essentially looking at uh, stereotyping. Now, when we also looked at, uh, you know, some of the details in terms of examples, in terms of what does stereotyping, for example, mean in the UK. So, for example, if we claim that, you know, you are this type of person and you could be wrong, or the idea that you're proposing because you come from this particular background or, you know, have this particular belief would be wrong. And this particular bit, uh, you know, is generally conforming to what is called stereotyping. Now, there are lots of different types of uh, stereotyping as well. And this is something that, you know, we looked at when we talked about, um, you know, in detail. And I'd, what I'd referred mostly um, and suggested to most of you was to look at, uh, doing a bit of reading, you know, on, on stereotyping, on prejudice, and obviously oppression by looking at uh, Wikipedia, because obviously in that uh, there are details of this, these three different terms given, uh, you know, which explain things like explicit stereotypes, implicit, implicit stereotypes, and, you know, why we look at uh, discussing this and why we have related this to discrimination in particular. Now, with that understanding in mind, what we are going to do is obviously go into the third learning outcome today. And the third learning outcome today is focused on understanding issues relevant to equal opportunity and diversity. So here we have three assessment criteria. They are going to be relating to exploring the origins and principles of how equal opportunity came about, you know, why it was felt that we need to have something as an act or as a legislation uh, to, you know, basically make this a law uh, in terms of you know ensuring that people uh, and are given equal treatment irrespective of their culture background or where they come from or what values and beliefs they have the second would be to look at defining diversity now british uh, britain is a diverse nation so obviously we we thrive on diversity and obviously it's a nation of immigrants or migrants and over the years what has happened is that when we in general talk about diversity we will basically look at the meaning of the word diversity, which is basically people being different. Uh, you know, we have variety of uh, or different or variety. You know, another word would be variety. And what we are going to do is talk about this in the context of, uh, you know, diversity in terms of how did it originate and, you know, what does it mean when we talk that we are a country of uh, diverse people, diverse cultures, and multiculturalism in general and this is where we will also slightly relate it to the fact that we've discussed what is called inclusion uh, that was in the first uh, learning outcome so another term that he came across when we talk about diversity which is variety which is something that we talk about uh, in general within the uk we will also look at basically the concept of uh, inclusion Last assessment criteria is going to be focused on providing examples of positive and negative practice uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, um, equal opportunity or discrim discrimination. And in this case, we will specifically focus on the legislations which have been introduced over the years 
and those legislations how do they help in preventing any sort of discrimination which can be meted out to individuals in different situations whether it's a job interview whether it's at work whether it's primarily you know in in relation to say for example your place of worship or any other place wherein you feel that this is uh, this treatment or you know the behavior which has been meted out to you essentially conforms to what is called being discriminatory now um, we will look at discussing some part of this learning outcome with it with uh, the presentation and what I'm going to do is share that with you now so that we are able to discuss each of these assessment criteria in a bit more detail now in general when we when when I want to talk about uh, you know learning outcome three and uh, look at basically issues around uh, you know or issues which are relevant to equal opportunity and diversity what we need to be able to do is talk about this in the context of health and social care because obviously it's a very uh, you know detailed topic but what we want to look at is how do we talk about equality and diversity primarily in the case of uh, you know looking at um, you know health and social care sector so in simple terms if i would put it equality in health and social care means that we provide similar or same access to all care health care services uh, irrespective of taking into account any considerations from where the people come from what their belief or background is so this would mean that we do not take into account age gender ethnicity their background you know their lifestyle sexual orientation uh, we talk we don't look into in terms of previous backgrounds obviously you will look at it from a point of view of previous medical history but the idea here is to not to say that okay i can't treat you or this treatment cannot be given out because you have a prior condition no that will not be taken into account disability is not taken into account and any sort of religion or belief uh, that you have is not taken into account while looking at you know obviously ensuring that uh, these care when i say care and healthcare services are provided primarily to individuals within uh, within the uk and in within the health and social care system so when we use any of these terms as a pretext to differentiate that would clearly mean that we are discriminating so if i say that um, say for example if you were running a private practice or you were running a private care home and uh, there was uh, say for example an individual uh, seeking to you know take admission and obviously become a resident of the care home but they had underlying conditions uh, then if you are refusing the patient uh, or you know the uh, resident in terms of not taking them on on the basis of for example they having certain types of illness then in those cases that would be seen as discrimination yes if there are certain requirements of that patient which means that a specific type of care has to be provided equipment has to be made available and obviously the care home needs to have certain bare minimum requirements of treating or taking care of that patient and if they are not there then the refusal is done on the basis of that we do not uh, you know cater to such patients that is that is fine but in general if you have patients with similar conditions in the care home and then you refuse somebody who's probably over the age of a 90 and you envisage that you know there, there would be more precaution and more care required to be done which might not be beneficial and you refuse it on those grounds uh, because of uh, making their illness a pretext then that would be termed as discrimination another example of this would be that if for example your care home advertises as a um, you know with, which provides care just taking to the example of care home and it advertises that we provide five star accommodation facilities for residents which include sauna you know pool uh, gym things like that and that has a certain amount of fees now in those cases if you are the only care room in that area and then um, say for example if there are residents which approach uh, that we would want to you know uh, take up a, you know residency in the care home for the purposes of uh, you know care being provided if they are refused on the basis of their social uh, you know background which is in terms of non affordability then that would be termed as again discrimination so there are policies and procedures in place wherein if you are coming from a slightly uh, say low economic background or for example 
if there is a, a certain amount of structure in terms of what has to be paid uh, to the care home in terms of getting uh, you know admission and care that in those cases uh, sometimes the local authorities and councils will prop up you know the budget so the individual will pay some part of it and some part of it will come from the local council but that would mean that there is no discrimination or no uh, general uh, refusal done on on and on admission on the basis of you know your social income or your uh, you know background in terms of um, social strata within the society so when we talk about in general um, uh, you know equality in uh, health and social care we'd be looking at making sure that care is provided irrespective of these factors taken into account and that would be termed as uh, equality as far as this is concerned now one of the other things that we also would want to look at is uh, talk about you know the um, let's say the origins of diversity and why why do we look at uh, you know diversity so when we talk about equality when we talk about diversity there's another word or term that we included in the first discussion is inclusion and inclusion in work workplace is important because or or it, you know when we give out or provide these services it is important because uh, this if we are not discriminating if we are not uh, you know treating people with the same intent then in some cases what we are looking at is also ensuring that there is tolerance and inclusion you know within uh, within say for example the uh, setup and that setup and include uh, tolerance would essentially mean that people are accepted they are accepted with whatever backgrounds or ba culture belief they come from so inclusion would be a state of you know in being included that means you are going to include people into existing groups and structures and that would mean that you are going to be providing equal opportunities uh, and you know servicing the requirements of the care, uh, you know patients by ensuring that adequate resources are put in place and that would mean uh, resources which could be physical administrative financial infrastructure to ensure that you know they do not feel excluded they feel that they are wanted and they feel that they are cared for and they are essentially included in all groups or all activities within a particular care home or within a particular setting so sometimes you say that you know um, when we look at um, you know classifications of say BAME, you know black asian minority community a lot of companies and organizations now have created i wouldn't use the word quotas but obviously have ensured that legislation has ensured from the government that there is equal representation of uh, from all groups within the society in all status of life in all public sector and you know obviously in private sector workings or uh, places of work and that has been done primarily through the process of what is called inclusion so when we talk about diversity and when we talk about uh, you know um, discrimination and equality we will also generally be asked about or will refer to what is called inclusion now when we in general talk about the concept of diversity um, and we talk about in general diversity you know in health and social care we would also be looking at um, you know the aspects of how we approach uh, you know patients how do we provide care in terms of uh, you know delivering it uh, because you could be one of the practitioners delivering the care uh, there could be other people involved in the team uh, and that would be you know looking at providing this care so when we look at this concept of diversity we will also again depend on when we talk about diversity which we will look at from a point of view of differences between people that should be appreciated and people's beliefs cultures and values should be treated with respect and that is what the purpose of diversity or the you know the uh, definition of diversity will be in the case of health and social care sector so that means we are going to be looking at uh, appreciating people from where they come from their beliefs their values and culture and we are going to be treating them with equality and also with respect and that essentially would uh, turn out to be what is the concept of diversity in healthcare now on a broader term if i go into a bit more detail and we look at uh, you know why this is the case we would be looking at the um, 
um, you know, the concept of diversity, which will often include inclusion of healthcare professionals, trainers, educators, researchers, patients, which are coming from varied background or, you know, culture and belief or various socioeconomic status, uh, irrespective of, you know, where they come from in terms of what language they speak or, you know, essentially what region they come from, but they will all be given similar care when it comes to uh, looking at e equality in terms of you won't be able to differentiate. So in the UK, the health system is, uh, sub you know, is basically the health care, mental health care, any sort of care is primarily provided by the government. And that is given out or basically reaches to the members of public through the National Health Service and the structure of National Health Service. Now, there is no differentiation between who's rich and poor, what kind of access you get. If you're on the waiting list, you're on the waiting list, just like other patients, but there is no differentiation or no way that you can either jump that list or, you know, uh, be given preference. But in that would be followed through the code, which is code of practice, which has been laid down. And all members of public within the UK would get the same amount or same type of service, which is primarily, uh, you know, given as per the terms and conditions or as per the code of practice defined in the NHS constitution. Uh, in terms of the NHS Act of 2010. Now, when we would look at why this is important, because we as a diverse nation, wherein the healthcare is subsidized and obviously provided by the government, here the diversity in health ensures that individuals from all backgrounds, beliefs, ethnicities, uh, and their beliefs and culture would get the same amount of or same type of care irrespective of, uh, you know, all these factors that we are discussing in terms of background, belief, ethnicity, you know, perspectives from in terms of social economic status, they will all be given the same kind of care when they come in to receive care as a patient within the National Health Service. Now, when we in uh, look at, uh, say, for example, when we look at obviously the concept uh, in general about, uh, you know, the diversity in health and social care, we are also going to be looking into you know, understanding how this is a journey in terms of diversity has come about, you know, why this is now is widely accepted. And as an organization or as a, um, let's say, a setting or as a uh, carer or as a person working within a health and social care setting, why we need to be aware of this? What are the typical definitions of equality, diversity, inclusion and why and what does it mean? So when we look at conforming to certain policies and procedures, within an organization, you would be looking at conforming with following the equality policy, the discrimination policy or the act of 2010, equality act of 2010. You would be looking at, uh, you know, some of the policies which have been take uh, formed by the organization, but on the basis of legislation, which has been introduced by the government over the years. So when we look at the health and safety act of 1975, and then a revision of that act in 2015, we look at data protection act. Uh, which was introduced, uh, you know, in 1998, then a revision of that with GDPR in 2016. You look at the uh, Health and Safety Act, you look at the Equality Act, you look at the Discriminatory uh, Act. These are all acts which have been put in place and over a point in time, they undergo revision from the government because of the changing times and requirements in terms of how the act which is now a law needs to be interpreted in in modern situations when it is being applied. So that is where you will also see that some of these acts and legislations will typically undergo changes and those changes would be essentially required because uh, of, of the changes happening in terms of how with this, the, how they are to be interpreted and how they are related to a particular sector when the, when the services are being provided. So if we get into, say, for example, with this understanding into some of the assessment criteria and lo look at what are the origins and principles of equal opportunity, the equal opportunity will also be defined as equality. And obviously, from a, a you know theoretical perspective, when we talk about um, equality, it basically brings out a general idea that, you know, people ought to compete on equal terms or level playing field as we normally say so they should not be disadvantaged if they come from a different background culture or ethnicity they should all be able to get a level playing field so for example uh, a simple example that i would put here would be that when athletes train 
and they get shortlisted into participating in the Olympics uh, from a particular country, then in this case, they are uh, all athletes are given, say, for example, equal opportunities to prove, meet the requirements which have been set. And if they are able to meet the requirements, then obviously they are shortlisted to represent and participate in the Olympics representing their country. Now, here there is no discrimination or any sort of uh, you know let's say uh, treatment given to any particular person who comes from maybe uh, uh, you know fairly um, say for example uh, from a different socioeconomic background um, no preference is given whether you are male or female if you are good in that category and you meet that criteria which has been set by the national you know standards uh, in order for you to qualify you would be given an opportunity to represent and obviously participate in the olympics and then the level playing field is provided which means yes you would have access to facilities wherein you train wherein you uh, you know get coaching but in certain cases obviously these access to playing facilities for example when we look at uh, you know people who participate uh, or represent um, britain for example in in uh, bicycling or in some sort of uh, you know um, equipments or stadia which is required for preparation then the government has created an infrastructure which is accessible to all people and they are able to train using that particular infrastructure and then obviously qualify or you know when they meet the requirements they are able to qualify to represent the country in olympics so similarly when we talk about you know just from a concept of equal opportunity or equality here we are going to be looking at that under the umbrella of diversity people from all walks of life will get the same access to health and social care as it is uh, you know written in the nhs constitution and there'll be no differentiation which will be done on the basis of their background race ethnicity or the socioeconomic background they come from so this is where we would say that this uh, particular aspect of uh, equality is generally applied when we when we talk about in the uh, you know in, in the context of health and social care now there are certain sectors you might think and you might ask that okay um, are there any sectors in which obviously there could be a difference in terms of how equality and diversity could be applied yes there could be certain sectors wherein the government is not subsidizing or providing these services or the private sector is setting in and that is where you would see that you know obviously equality and diversity is implemented as a standard policy and procedure when these services are being provided but there could be differentiation on the basis of where you come from and how you come from or what is your socioeconomic status a simple example that you can relate here is that if you have private medical insurance now if you have private medical insurance then in those cases people are paying an additional premium to receive uh, you know services uh, should they need uh, in the in the case of uh, say for example healthcare and because they are uh, using private uh, you know they have private medical insurance that means they can also go across apart from the nhs they can go across to private providers like bupa or spiral uh, hospitals and they could get treatment done from there now that will be obviously uh, possible because of your socioeconomic status or maybe private medical insurance being given by your employer but generally speaking that would uh, you know mean that in in some cases you would not be able to apply equality as a concept because in uh, in in those cases it is going to be driven and dependent on the socioeconomic status of the person that means they are they are coming from an income or a background wherein they are able to afford it and that affordability allows them to uh, you know access private uh, medical health or private health care now if you compare this with the us you would generally see that within the us obviously there is nothing uh, like the national health service everybody has to have national insurance you know what you call private medical insurance and if you have private medical insurance uh, you know the Obama, Obama bill which was introduced and it is now kind of known as the Obama bill he introduced a legislation that you know when you have to access private uh, you when you have to access medical services or healthcare services everybody should have medical insurance but if we, there are uh, premiums which have to be uh, given or have to be uh, you know um, say for example 
if you have a condition like um, say for example you have a heart condition or a diabetic condition then in your case your private medical insurance is going to be more expensive in terms of your premium that you pay so what he introduced was one bill which allows uh, all na- people in the US uh, which are US nationals to have private medical insurance they could they will need to have it they will pay premiums according to what they can afford but if they need treatment you know in certain cases wherein uh, those treatments would require them to prop up their premiums to be able to receive that then the government would step in and you know bridge that gap by providing that premium when that treatment is needed but generally everybody should have medical insurance and that medical insurance should allow individuals to access health and social care services uh, you know within the us but in some cases if you say for example you've had an accident and you uh, need to have now um, um, your private medical insurance covers it to a certain amount say for example but after that if you still need support and obviously treatment then in those cases the government steps in and obviously bridges that gap in the premium and that allows you to access you know healthcare and healthcare services in the us so a very different system but there also what he has introduced along uh, because of the obama bill is that he's introduced equality uh, in terms of being people being or you know us citizens being able to access healthcare irrespective of their socio economic background and uh, you know their income or their status and that has been a significant change which was introduced in 2008 in the us otherwise people who did not have the affordability or the means to be able to get treatment you know could not get it and obviously in those cases uh, you know they they could have been they, they were fatalities and obviously that created an inequality in their healthcare system so this bit of introducing that premiums will be bridged or you know uh, premiums will be compensated or topped up as i would put it by the government in certain cases when people cannot afford the treatment is the signature obama bill that he introduced in his presidency but fortunately for us in the uk obviously the health and social care services are provided through the nhs they are all uh, you know obviously under the preview of the purview of the government and that means irrespective of our background religion caste culture where we come from or whether we have uh, you know social economic status that has got nothing to do because uh, the government uh, provides the uh, national health uh, the, the services within the health and social care sector they are provided through the national health service and they are uh, provided uh, or people have access to it uh, in in the same um, you know all people have access to it uh, without any uh, you know discrimination or without any factors being brought in for the purposes of you know comparison now what we will also look at is understand uh, you know the say for example uh, when i talk about equality in general what we would want to do is understand you know what is this provision so when we talk about equality in terms of health and social care provision a lot of us know that when we look at medication or for example if you need medical treatment if you are a, if you are a child or if you have children who are under the age of 16 there is no prescription piece also required to be paid or if you are over the age of 60 then you don't need to pay any prescription fees now these are standards uh, or rules and regulations which the government has introduced they might slightly vary across the four nations england scotland wales and northern ireland but generally speaking uh, in scotland there are no prescription fees because the population is about 5 and 1/2 million but when we look at england and wales there is a certain amount of prescription fees that you need to pay to be able to access medicine but if you're under the age of 16 or over the age of 60 or 65 uh, then in those cases you would generally see that you do not even pay any sort of prescription fees uh, when you get a prescription from your gp now this is implementation of equality uh, because of legislation which has been passed by the government or the act or legislation which has been introduced by the government so when you are pregnant or for example in certain cases when you have certain conditions then also you are not required to pay uh, for example prescription fees if you are on benefits or you are under the uh, say for example the um, universal credit system uh, in some cases 
there are categories if you have ever seen on your prescription when you turn it around when you take it to the pharmacy normal, normal normally the pharmacist or the one of the persons in the pharmacy would ask you to you know sign the prescription and in some cases if you're not looking at paying the prescription fees that you're working in the army you're a, you're a person who's serving in the army or armed forces uh, if you're pregnant if you're a student or if you are for example under the age of 16 you are over the age of 65 or and there are one or two other categories in terms of if you're on benefits or receiving job seekers allowance then you are not required to pay uh, the subscription uh, fees which is required to uh, you know get medication so this is a simple example of how uh, provision of health and healthcare services is done in the UK and this is predominantly possible because of the equality legislation and the rules which have been introduced by the government as far as um, uh, you know UK is concerned now when we also talk about um, you know how do we promote as a workplace what we also need to know is how do we promote uh, you know the um, uh, the equality and diversity policy at, at a workplace now, what you will generally see is that most organizations need to have an equality and diversity policy. Now, in our case, as an educational institution, I don't know how many of you have uh, gone into the website and obviously seen, we are also required, um, you know, as an as a institution to have what is called an equality and diversity policy. So let me just quickly show that to you. And this is true. Uh, you know, for all uh, workplaces or all types of, you know, workplaces. So if I go down, you would generally see that we have an equality and diversity policy, which is given here. There are certain minimum requirements, um, you know, which basically would, um, uh, you know, essentially require uh, you to have an, uh, you know, um, let's say, publicly advertise and make available and implement some of these policies in the workplace so things like you know when we talk about data protection health health and safety we talk about academy uh, you know equality and diversity policy uh, you know in terms of reasonable adjustments and special considerations these are basic policies that have to be put into place because we are trying to implement uh, equality and diversity policy in a workplace now it, in certain cases for example we are in a premises wherein it has access to wheelchair or it has lifts. So in those cases, if we have learners who come in and obviously have had, say, for example, if you've had, assuming if somebody does have an accident and is wheelchair ridden or needs crutches to walk or, you know, normally reach and come into a college, then obviously certain provisions have to be made. And in those cases, you look at special adjustments or reasonable adjustments, which can be made so that people uh, you know are able to adjust for the time frame in which they are undergoing treatment or you know uh, recovering from a particular accident so these are basic bits that have to be included uh, you know for the purposes of ensuring that there is no discrimination and there is no undue advantage being taken by the organization and publishing of these policies and procedures ensures that the organization is essentially uh, complying with the legislation which has been put in place by the government now this is an example that i'm showing you that obviously when we talk about the equality act we talk about this the discrimination what are the uh, what are the various bits which are covered in the policy and how they are implemented within an organization is something which is you know clearly given uh, in this particular document and most employers or places of work would need to you know have these uh, available uh prominently uh, displayed or have them available either on their website or in in printed or electronic form so that uh, people can have access to it now if you feel that you are not being uh, you know you you feel you're not being treated equally or fairly then in case cases people have the ability to be able to use these policy documents to look at making a complaint or lodging a complaint and it explains what kind of uh, you know inc incidences can be treated as you know discrimination or as can be treated as uh, that they have not been uh, given a fair chance or obviously have, uh, the treatment meted out has not been fair and in those cases you can also go in and appeal uh, you know against how um, you know and why this 
why is that you feel that this has not been done and you can appeal for it and the organization is then required by law to undertake uh, you know an inquiry and in those inquiries the findings of that inquiry puts things across in black and white so as you can see it's quite a detailed policy which covers a lot of aspects of you know uh, things which are related to equality and diversity so it could be in training and development it could be in recruitment it could be in the environment it could be in the support services which the college provides like for example if i say if I, if there is preferential treatment given to a particular student but the others are not getting that treatment which could be termed as unfair support services uh, it could be grading for example in the assignments uh, you you might uh, you know um, be a favorite of the teacher and might get good grades but somebody else who has put in the equal or same amount of work but has not been uh, given the same grading could represent and that would be a part and parcel of equality but start under the academic uh, you know policy or misconduct you would be looking at you know recruitment and selection and that would be covered under that aspect and when we look at participation and obviously access to facilities within uh, you know a particular week workplace they would also be you know covered under the aspect of equality policy so a lot of uh, when we talk in general about equality you would be looking at a lot of things are essentially taken into account to ensure that um, you know there is no discrimination difference in terms of treatment meted out to individuals which will essentially be uh, giving them or affecting them in terms of the services that they are uh, receiving from a particular workplace and this context in terms of health and social care would be again related to in general uh, uh, you know the care being provided to an individual or a patient and there is where you know this particular policy is going to be looked at so for example if uh, sometimes you see i don't know and this is something which is some of you might be able to relate to is that sometimes you see that you know um if you had an accident the and, and you under, you have undergone treatment and after that when you undergone treatment what tends to happen is that if you need a support of a crutch or a wheelchair normally the national service would provide provide that to you and on the wheelchair on the crutch it is normally written as a property of the nhs and when not being used should be returned back to the hospital now the reason is because there are some of these resources which the hospital has got funding for and have developed it and have it uh, depending on the number of patients they receive and provide these services sometimes some of these resources need to be after you've gotten better or you've you know you've come out of that particular situation and you've been able to use those services sometimes it is recommended that these instruments equipments are then returned back because they then can be put to use uh, after a bit of you know maybe wear and tear and refurbishment uh, for the use and needs of other patients within the hospital because some of them might not be able to afford it so in this case it is a part of the treatment plan wherein the nhs would provide this to you and then some of them uh, once they get better and obviously if you don't need that in the future then it is expected that these are to be returned back uh, so that it can be put to good use that means it can be provided to other patients who might need it after or during the course of their recovery and this is where you get to see in smaller aspects of how you know uh, the national health service or the nhs will essentially be looking at you know ensuring that equalities uh, you know and, and and the care type of service and the care being provided is 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 being done from a perspective of equal opportunity being given to all the patients so any questions on this so far okay now when we look at the concept of diversity here we would need to understand why this came about and what does it mean so again going back to one or two things that we talk about in terms of uh, you know diversity diversity for us means that we are recognizing and taking into account everything that makes us unique as an individual now we also would look at uh, you know um, diversity when we talk about this in general we would also look at that in the uk there is a diversity law which has been which is an act which has been put into uh, uh, um, you know uh, which is something which most organizations need to have and implement and this is required by law so that means a inclusion 
and diversity is something which all organizations would need to have and promote and this is protected by law now when we look at different backgrounds the way we live the say for example the personalities we have or the the i would put it this way for example the way we think in some cases and we come you know and obviously have opinions and come from a variety of backgrounds and we have because of which we have different perspectives so your lifestyle your social economic status your culture your belief would give you certain you know perspectives which could be different from other individuals and when we talk about taking into account all these perspectives all the uh, you know aspects of how an individual is different one is different from the other and we take them into account from a positive aspect of it and you know treat it as uh, um, you know treat it as equal across when we are discussing or when we are taking into account uh, this for a particular situation would be the concept of diversity and how we apply you know diversity as far as general in general within the society is concerned so this concept of diversity allows us to look at things from different angle but at the same time it allows us to make an impact because every individual is different and when they deal when they discuss when they uh, you know do their roles and responsibilities they are going to have a different kind of an impact in in terms of what they are doing uh, in various communities or you know in 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 terms of various organizations and this being taken into account to ensure that no discrimination discrimination is being vetted out would be essentially the uh, you know concept of diversity no there is a, say for example a particular um, you know um, let's say a handout which i have got and this particular handout is a handout which i want to show you um, is a handout which primarily you know looks at um, equality diversity and inclusion in a workplace now this is uh, probably a, a, a 10 10 15 minute read but this will give you let me show you the handout but this would give you um uh, this would give you um you know essentially a good idea in terms of how uh, we are going to be looking at uh, you know dealing with this particular topic because it's a vast topic so when we look at this particular handout that i've shown you on the uh, on the screen what you are going to see is generally it talks about equality diversity and inclusion in a workplace and it gives you some background in terms of how this uh, is important and how they have come into play so when we look at this particular uh, handout because we need to look at diving into the concept of diversity and where are the origins of this is something that you get to see uh, being talked about in terms of historical uh, context so obviously this term of being equal or the state of being equal was first used in the early 15th century and over a point in time the idea of how uh, you know people need to be treated uh, equal as equals has matured over the centuries and obviously it takes into account their personality race religion ethnicity gender you know uh, disability beliefs you know values cultures but it still allows uh, by taking into all these accounts still allows us to embrace and celebrate in a way within the uk um the aspect of that we are a diverse society and we are a society which is tolerant to diversity now in accordance with this when we talk about legislation uh, you know there is an equalities act of 2010 which was introduced and obviously this is a, a revision which was done uh, to the earlier act of 2005 and in 1990 um what you generally see is that government has made it a law uh, or put this into a law that you know uh, we need to be able to be able to treat people from different backgrounds culture race nationality whatever it is with equal rights and this law or basically puts uh, this act particularly puts that into law so equal opportunities are provided to all individuals so when we look at schools for example in the uk education is free whether you go uh, you know come from an x background y background schooling irrespective of that is absolutely free yes to a certain extent there are lots of debates which happen that why are grammar schools uh, you know allowed to gain or get funding from the government obviously in those cases there is a slight bit of 
differentiation which happens on the basis of socioeconomic status. So people who are able to afford can also go into grammar schools, but the local councils also, uh, you know, and there is a testing system. So you can qualify to go to a grammar school. And in some cases, if uh, you're not able to meet the requirements of the fees and other, uh, say, for example, the fees requirements because of the income and background you come from, the local authority will prop that up and there is no differentiation allowed uh, you know, on, on that side or discrimination allowed on that side. So every year you would see in certain years like grade six or grade seven or in grade three, you would generally see students will appear for exams to be able to, and those exams are not conducted by schools. If you look at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, these exams are concerned, con, you know, um, conducted by the GMCA for all the grammar schools in the Manchester area. And obviously if you classify a listing is put out, and that listing allows you to uh, then understand that, okay, where have you got admission or on the basis of test, what marks you've scored, you are then able to get admission in that particular grammar school. So this particular handout, I would suggest is what you need to go through. This particular handout will give you the details about the background of the concepts of diversity, inclusion, and equality, and is a good read because this will also give you some indication and uh, you know background into the various acts which are related to the equality act of 2010 and directly or indirectly you know things like anti-fraud policy anti-bribery policy discrimination policy that you get to see safeguarding policy that you see uh, you know in in different organizations are all different got forms of connotation of how diversity is applied you know within a particular context of uh, you know uh, a workplace and this would also be useful for you to generally increase your knowledge about the three important terms which are uh, which are referred to time and again in this unit and they tend to be equality diversity and inclusion so my suggestion would be this particular handout is on Moodle and I would suggest that you read this particular handout because this will give you this uh, additional background into uh, you know, uh, to understand the theoretical bits about the concept of diversity and how it came about. There are some useful websites which also can be clicked on, uh, you know, from here. But generally speaking, there will be additional reading which might be in general context, but not in the context of health and social care. So the handout is a good handout from a concept of getting background into uh, I would say uh, the, the, you know, the history of equality, diversity and inclusion, uh, but in a general context and might not relate entirely to health and social care sector. Now, once you've read this, what I've done now in the few slides, in two slides is I have contextualized this in the context of health and social care. So when we look at uh, the concept of diversity, what we are looking at is exploring the different characteristics of how diversity is applied within the society. And when we look at diversity within the society, we will look at certain aspects of quantifying it by take, talking about interest, beliefs, age, you know, lifestyle, personal characteristics, and, you know, cultural identities. And this is where I've put in an example to classify it to the context of health and social care and how, as a practitioner, we would essentially be applying the concept of diversity when we provide services to various patients uh, while working within the sector. So if we look at, for example, one of the things like beliefs. Now here, sometimes you would see certain people have physical uh, symbols of a belief. For example, uh, in the case of Christians, we have the cross. In the case of, uh, you know, uh, Muslims, for example, they would be looking at, uh, you know, so for example, we look at churches, we look at mosques, we look at synagogues, we look at temples, we look at gurdwaras. So obviously these are all beliefs wherein, you know, uh, they are to be included in terms of society. So you can't restrict that, you know, you can't build the mosque or you can't build another church or build a temple. So in this case, the concept of diversity, because there are people coming and living in the UK from diverse backgrounds. They are free to practice their beliefs and, uh, you know, their cultures and accordingly, you know, uh, practice them or worship them. Then in those cases, those beliefs are taken into account and different places 
uh, you know, would of worship are allowed to be made or constructed. And that is where you would look at in some cases, you know, uh, diversity being applied. Now, if I look at this in the context of health and social care, sometimes you would see ministers of religion are allowed to visit patients who are in who are receiving say end of life care or are receiving critical care or may not survive. You would generally see, uh, you know, attendance or in general, uh, you know, places of uh, you know, worship being created in various hospitals uh, in certain locations, even in Universal Square. We uh, on the ground floor, we have a place wherein you know, most people who believe in Islam and have to do prayers four or five times a day can actually go in and obviously use that room, which is called the prayer room. So in health and social care, when we look at ministers of religion getting access to patients during, uh, you know, certain thing, conditions like end of care, uh, you know, which, which is being provided or if they have uh, a wish or, you know, if they want to look at obviously, you know, seeing somebody, then in those cases, you would take into account their beliefs and, you know, necessary, uh, let's say, um, uh, steps would be taken to ensure that that can, uh, that wish or that need can be fulfilled. Another example that I would give you is for when we look at lifestyles. So, for example, sometimes you would see people uh, wear a headscarf. So in certain religions, if it is considered a part of their identity, sometimes when you're dealing with them as carers or as practitioners, what you would generally do is if you need to get access or, for example, in some cases, you need uh, that to be removed or, uh, you know, taken um, out for the purposes of, say, in, uh, providing medication or providing care, then obviously with the cultural beliefs and, uh, you know, requirements, tolerances in mind, what we ask them politely to do is can i touch this or can i uh, you know ask you to remove it and that is where you're looking at you know uh, being uh, uh, res uh, you know treating that person with respect understanding their culture and requirements and then obviously adequately uh, you know requesting them to uh, you know either give access or provide access or remove so that you are able to provide the due care which is which is required to be uh, delivered and that would be taking into account some of the cultural identities or personal characteristics of the individual and this is where we see that diversity is used or uh, uh, training is done with the staff within the health and social care setting on a regular basis for them to be able to understand uh, and, and, and accept some of these uh, you know diversities so that care then can be meted out or given out you know meeting those requirements of the uh, of the patients so respect individuality and obviously uh, um, you know independence is allowed to be practiced and uh, you know um, uh, information relating to this is provided through staff trainings and that allows people working within this sector which is practitioners nurses carers you know healthcare assistants doctors medics to be able to practice the concept of diversity when they are giving out or when they are doling, uh, you know, essentially, I would say, providing these services to the patients. Any questions on this? Okay, last but not the least, the last assessment criteria talks about, you know, we discussing the role of legislation in implementing and enforcing diversity within, uh, you know, UK and in general within the health and social care sector. So we are not going to be focused on UK, but we are going to be focused on, you know, the role of legislation primarily in promoting diversity within health and social care. Um, now, when we look at the impact of legislation, there are law acts and laws which are created and they allow the government and government related bodies to uh, use this authority to be able to ensure that diversity is uh, you know, uh, taken into account while providing these services. Now, what are the positives of uh, legislation? Positives of legislation or regulation is that it allows people to, you know, uh, use it. And obviously it allows, uh, in this case, diversity, equality and inclusion to be enforced uh, in, in, in all places wherein it needs to be done by you know using this legislation which has been introduced by the government now it, to a certain extent it also has been proven by research and studies that it also leads to what is called low staff turnover that means if you have this legislation implemented within the organization you would generally see people would be feeling safe and secure 
that they would be treated equally and then in those cases what you generally see is that the staff or the people working within the organization tend to stay within the organization because they do not feel that uh, they are being discriminated against so they are not being given equal opportunities to prosper within their role now there are lots of advantages in general about legislation and that is why they've been put into place by the government and that is where their role is to enforce the principles of equality and diversity in any sort of workplace now there are some negatives of it as well now negatives of it could be that if there is a fallout and if the employees or staff fall out with the, with the employer then obviously there are legal requirements which are required to be met there is a link in the equality uh, diversity and inclusion handout which i have just shown you earlier and it talks about the acas forum if you feel that uh, this particular uh, you know if you feel that an employer is not being fair towards you then you could take the employer into a tribunal and that uh, in terms of the dealing of those services primar primarily you know happens through a body called acas and acas is a government body which basically looks at you know providing um, uh, you know um, say services primarily to staff and employees working within the organization uh, you know to help them represent uh, you know in terms of uh, if they feel that they have not been given proper treatment or you know if they have been discriminated against when they are, when when we are looking at uh, you know they were working in a workplace so ecas essentially stands for advisory conciliation and arbitration service and those of you if you have gone in and seen obviously the ecas website you would generally see that it basically talks if i just quickly show you the website for a second uh, it will give a lot of detail about you know things which are related to so if you just type ACAS on Google, you would generally see this comes in and it would normally say, you know, um, give advice, guidance and information on what is discrimination, what is bullying, what is harassment uh, in other forms, uh, oppression and how you can, you know, if you feel that any of these is being meted out to you at your workplace, then how you can use the arbitration, uh, you know, advice, reconciliation, uh, um, and the arbitration service to basically bring a case across your, uh, you know, across your uh, employer. Now, that is where it meant that, you know, the negatives of legislation in this case could be that it could lead to legal cost and ramblings, and this could lead to, uh, you know, useful hours being wasted uh, when legal action is initiated. And in those cases, it is important for employers to ensure that you know these policies are put into practice they are not just on paper and they are being implemented to the core in terms of every word of it so that one they are complying with law and the other bit is that they are trying to reduce any sort of legal action that can be brought against them uh, because of uh, the discrimination or in this case equal opportunities not being provided to the uh, staff now the role of legislation is what we need to understand now there are these five different acts that we need to be aware of from a health and social care perspective obviously there are lots of them but generally speaking these are the ones that we need to be aware of and that is where i would suggest that when we talk about the role of legislation this these particular acts in general would inform uh, you that how um, uh, you know they are uh, say for example why they were created and obviously how they are enacted within an organization now because this task talks about the role of legislation what i would want you to do is basically use these acts and then do a bit of research at your end to find out uh, you know what these acts are and how and what they prescribe in terms of you know looking at uh, equality and providing equal opportunity so here my suggestion would be for example um, I would want you to go in and do a bit of research, although there is a handout which I will provide, which has all these acts as a Word document, which is going to be on Moodle um, because I have that document. But what I would want you to do is go in and do a bit of a quick search like I'm going to show you now. And that would basically help you research and get, gather knowledge in terms of what the acts essentially mean and how they are related to equality diversity and equal opportunity in regards to this particular unit so what i've done is i've just put on google the equality act of 2010 and as you can see it brings across a couple of things but 
what we are going to do is look at this in in a point from a point of view of uh, you know uh, in in the context of health and social care so if i just put and uh, you go to sky's website and when you go to sky's website what you will be able to see is it talks about the equality act in the context of health and social care and that is what you would need to read so in this case itself it will talk about age discrimination how this act is uh, you know put into place what are the legal mechanisms and again this would provide you the uh, this particular site if i just put it on i shouldn't have shown it to you but if i put it on on the slide would basically cover all the acts that we would want to understand from a perspective of how they are relevant to the health and social care sector so you pretty much would be able to get every sort of information from here this is what i would want you to read and understand and do a bit of research so that you are aware that what is a gender recognition act what is an equality act what is the equality act of 2010 when it was updated what is the human rights act and how they are related to this particular unit of uh, you know equality diversity or equal opportunity and uh, diversity with regards to this particular unit now here the um, assignment when we discuss next week or when in when we do it on friday in the class would be essentially to look at getting into details because when it will ask you about this task and criteria that what is the role of legislation you will have to pick out one or two of these acts and talk about them by giving an example of how they are uh, you know implemented within a health and social care setting so that is where your research that you do now would be helpful for you to get into and uh, useful for you at a later stage when we do the discussion on assignment so with this we more or less have covered this particular unit um, you know and all the assessment criteria in detail you would have a copy of this presentation and obviously you know um, uh, you know the recording which will be available so that should you need to revisit what we've discussed today can be done by going into one reading the handout on equality diversity and inclusion second looking at reading about uh, the sky's website wherein it talks about the equality act in general related to health and social care and the third would be to primarily focus on uh, you know understanding the concept of diversity which is primarily through the uh, links on wikipedia any questions on this so far hi morning rama yes good morning Sorry, you said uh, we need to do the 